All right, now we're going to start to remove our cylinder here. Now you guys got a couple choices here. We could simply take our cylinder nuts off and pull the whole cylinder off. We don't have to take the head off. But we're going to because what do we want to do? Inspect it. Inspect it. Now, how am I going to remove these bolts? A start pattern or according to the service manual would be our ideal situation, correct? Now that I'm good and loose here, I'm going to switch back to a 12 millimeter out of here. So far, what sockets have I used? 8, 10, and 12. Eight, 10, and 12. That's what I grabbed for T-handles as I started as well. We're baggy. And you have to label all these bags. These are the only acorn nuts on here. Am I going to pretty much be able to figure out where those go? Yep. Probably more than likely. This is the one people forget a lot, and then they start beating on the thing. Inside the motor mount, we have one hidden in here. Give it a light tap. If I, if I get it up too far on one edge, it's hard to come off all of these studs. So i got to kind of back and forth, back and forth, and be able to pull that head. Drop that in there. I'm going to look at my combustion chamber. I'm going to look for debris in here. We'll get into a lot more detail on this as we go. Set your cylinder head this direction. Why not set it this way? That's a precision machined uh, surface area there. I don't want to set that down. Guys, here's something to really think about here. Your gaskets are directional. Do you actually see here, if you can get down the video, see where it says exhaust? Okay, that's okay. We'll pass this around. The exhaust needs to point towards the exhaust and it needs to face up. If you were to do this the wrong way, this will fit on here in numerous different patterns. What it's going to do though is it's going to block passages for the coolant. You see how it would block off there? So we want to make sure that we're installing this like the directions say, the exhaust and facing up. Now I had a, I had a student one time that put one of these wrong on a CR500 and then it actually pinched because two of the bolts were actually a different size than the other ones. So then when the head was put down, it severed the gasket. And as soon as we got the bike running, it was pumping exhaust outside the head. Bad day? Yes. I want you to notice something else too about the cylinder head and the gasket is we have two precision dial pins. They want this thing to be exactly where they designed it to sit. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll go ahead and pop our reed cage off here too. Take a look at that. I don't know if that's on your uh, room cylinder. We don't have that on our lab sheet. I'm going to take it off so you guys can take a look at it. You pass this stuff around. Okay. Do you need to take this water jacket off? Is that going to do anything for us? When you get your new gasket kit, it's going to come with an O-ringer gasket for that, and I recommend using it. If it's not leaking, why would you put a new one in? Yeah. And because of age. You got to think, it's going to fail at some time. Why not make the whole motor a 2012 rather than make just part of it 2012? Does that make sense? What's that? Preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance. So here's something to start talking about on our reeds here. We have our first manifold. This is impregnated with some rubber on here to create a seal against the second part of it. This here is made and designed to affect the torque. You can get different shapes of these where manufacturers like Boysen or somebody will sell one of a different shape and size. They say creates more power. As I pull off my reed block, this is where I want to hold it up to the light and I'm looking to see if I can see any light through here. If I can see light through here, 100% needs to be replaced. Does anybody know what the old trick is to do with worn out reeds? A lot of guys take these apart and flip them around and put them back in upside down. And then the tension of the street. That's fine to get by for a day or for the weekend, but not for any kind of real reality. I mean, if you're in a racing situation and you didn't have another set, I could see you wanting to do that. But it's, it doesn't do any good. You kinda, you're just changing the arch of it. And especially then when it starts to, uh, you know, after a lot of use, if you were to do long term on that, by flipping them upside down, would you agree that would eventually break off? When you wear them and you stretch them and they lose their tension, they just become arched. They just stay arched and they just don't work. 
If you flip that reed around and now you force it backwards the other way, it's going to break the reed. So not something that I recommend. As far as attention to detail on assembly, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll let you guys pass around. You see the arrows? So it has arrows facing up. This will fit either direction, but they want us to put this in directional and have the arrows facing up. And you said that, that, that piece that you're putting in the center there affects torque? Yes. It affects the overall performance of the of the engine itself. It's designed that shape and size, and it affects if you leave that out, it's definitely going to affect the engine. I don't know how it'll affect it, what way, but it will affect it. It's not something that you'd want to leave out. So they got different sizes of those for probably the shape. Like instead of it being real square cut, maybe they'll change the shape of it or the length of it or something like that. It's getting a little above even my engineering ability, if you will. What's this here? Four. The crankcase. It's our crankcase breather, okay? All right, guys, now we're starting to get down to, we don't need to disassemble the power valve. We're going to get this cylinder up. This is a good opportunity <laughs> to be able to take a look at the cylinder and piston and see our top dead center. One thing I like to do is I like to put the piston at top dead center and wiggle it back and forth. You hear that knocking? We're going to have a little bit of that. That's not something that totally scares me. But I want to take a look. If that thing's slamming around there, then I know my cylinder to piston is, uh, clearance is crazy, right? Why, why yank the cylinder off and then not be able to feel that? Do you get what I'm saying? I want to be able to grab that data right now and go, ah, it's not feeling too bad. All right. I'm going to need to grab a, I think a 12 or 14 millimeter wrench here. We're getting real close. How do you even measure that clearance? I'm going to teach you how. Okay, there's a 14. One thing I like to do here on the cylinder, there's my rubber mallet right here. Just get these just cracked loose. Remember me saying two of these have dolphins? Now notice, which side of the wrench did I use? Okay, why? So I don't slip off. If you have to, use, sometimes you're going to have to use this open end, and what are you going to end up probably doing to that nut? What do I recommend you do with that rounded off nut? Replace it. So right now, do you think that's something you want to write on your work order? Sometimes you guys are going to have nuts that will not remove all of the way, and you have to. This front one might be one of these examples. Just take, simply take these off. Okay, do you see how I can't get this nut out? I can't actually get it out. There's not enough room. If I, if I find the perfect spot, I might be able to. But one thing you want to think about, a lot of times they're actually hidden and inside and underneath. And so you have to remember when you slide your cylinder back down, what do you need to make sure and put in? That nut. If you forget that, it's going to be a problem. Now, if I just pop this up just a little bit. No, these are still just too tight. Bagging one. Can we just use the same one as we can use the head? Yep, I'm game for that. I barely need any clearance here. And I was able to get that off. Okay. So, what's that? Five points. Nope. No pry points on these cylinders. fastener in here. I think we're just stuck pretty good. What I don't want to hit, now this is real thin aluminum or possibly even plastic. That would be a problem. Okay. Just think we're stuck pretty good on this cylinder stud right here. I can see that I got a gap going here. You see how it just popped? What's happening is I was starting to get a little cocked. So now, now as I come up, what do I got to be really careful about my piston? So I'm going to reach down right away on this and be able to pop that up. Does that make sense? I do not want this thing dropping or banging around. Okay, let's make sure I'm answering everything on your lap sheet. You want to go ahead and, uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and keep recording this on here. Um, other, one thing I asked you guys is under the, under the cylinder head where I took those acorn nuts off, I said, are there any cylinder washers under these nuts? Quite often, you're going to have a copper washer under there. Those are a one-time use and a replacement washer. Does that make sense? There are Does, here, though, right? I didn't see any. That doesn't mean that they're not missing, though. Okay? you got to think about what we talked about earlier. The spring on here, too. Okay. 
Does your engine use a head gasket or O-rings? This one uses a head gasket. You can look for some O-rings. How many fasteners secure the cylinder head? That's all stuff you guys are going to answer on your motors. Listen to me on this. What care must be used when placing the open end wrench on the cylinder base nuts? Not rounding it off. If any of the nuts, won't, do any of the nuts not come off without lifting the cylinder, just like our front one here? We need to know when we go back together to set that on there. In this case, what must be done before reassembly? We have to make sure to put that nut in there. Okay. We are, we can go ahead and stop at that point. You want to stand for these, though.